Hey everyone! This here is the 2021 ASUS ROG Zephyrus M16, one of the first portable performance laptops available with an Intel Tiger Lake Core H45 hardware platform and also one of the very few with a 16-inch 16x10 display. For the most part, this is built on the same chassis that we've tested in the AMD-based 2021 Zephyrus G15 with a magnesium shell and uh, the Ergolift form factor, but it is Intel exclusive this time around and is only available in this black variant. Among the other important changes, there's a 16x10 display with narrow bezels and an excellent quality panel, and a camera at the top of this screen and Thunderbolt 4 support. Now, this video is a preview of the Zephyrus M16 series based on my time with this pre-release sample illustrated here. We're not going to cover performance in depth at this point, since this is not a final unit, but I'll follow up with an updated article on the site and maybe an updated video as well in a future review. Ok, so as I mentioned already, the M16 is built on the exact same chassis as the G15, but it is only available in this black variant, while the G15 came in either grey or white. I do prefer the more exquisite looks of this black M16 over the grey G15, and the coating on the interior seems to be a little softer and nicer on the M16 as well. At the same time though, the M16 easily shows smudges, both on the armrest and on the lid, but especially on the rubbery black keys. This aside, the M16 also gets the 16x10 screen and thus smaller bezels, especially at the bottom of the display, as well as finally a camera integrated at the top. It's in fact a decent quality 2 megapixel camera for laptop standards. The overall design is also similar between the two, with a clean lid uh, with muted branding elements and a reflective prismatic layer that shines out the light in this interesting way. The laptop also gets a spacious interior with an ample armrest, a centered keyboard, a large glass click pad and the speaker grills on the sides. Just like the G15, the M16 offers a set of 6 speakers and the audio quality is some of the better available in a portable laptop these days. The IO placement is also identical to the G15 with most ports uh, squeezed on the left side all the way to the front and only a microSD card reader and a USB-A port on the right. The novelty is the support for Thunderbolt 4, since this M16 is built on an Intel platform, but having those USB-C ports positions all the way to the front of the laptop partially impedes the practicality of this update when connecting peripherals, as uh, you'll get all those cables in an inconvenient location. Now, as far as the construction goes, the M16 feels much like the G15 as well, and by that I mean it feels alright in everyday use, but it still creaks when you pick it up, especially on the bottom D panel. The lid isn't very strong either, so I'd make sure to put this laptop in a protective sleeve when having it in my backpack. The M16 is also the same form factor as the G15, with ergolift hinges that raise up the laptop's main body on this small rubber feet placed at the bottom of the screen in order to further increase the space under the laptop and improve the flow of fresh air into the thermal module. This kind of hinge design also allows the screen to lean back flat to 180 degrees. However, as I mentioned in my G15 and my G14 past reviews, I'm not a fan of this sort of a design on a full-size performance laptop, because it implies that the hot air is expelled by the thermal module straight into the screen. That's in fact an even greater potential issue here with this M16 model, as the panel is less than a finger away from the radiators here, and there's no longer that plastic chin that sucks up the brunt of the heat that we had on the G15. We need to see what this translates into in terms of panel temperatures once we get the review model. That aside, there's one more inconvenient detail that I noticed during my time with this laptop and that's the fact that the status LEDs reflect into the bottom of the screen, something that bothered me when using the laptop at night. I wasn't happy with the status LEDs reflecting in the bezel of the G15 either, but they're even worse here where they bounce off the actual panel. I'd have to find a way to cover or disconnect these LEDs if I were to get this laptop. Ok, so as far as the inputs go, the Zephyrus M16 borrows the keyboard from the G15 series and improves on how the keycaps feel, with a slightly softer and more rubbery coating. The layout is standard and minimalistic, without a numpad or an extra column of function keys at the right, as in the previous gen Zephyrus M15 or S15 models. That's because the space around the keyboard is reserved for those speakers on this series. You do get the set of media keys at the top left though, and the home end, page up and page down are binned uh, as secondaries for the arrow keys. As a side note, there's no dedicated print screen key on this layout, but you do get a shortcut for window snapping in the F6 key. There's very little to complain about the typing experience here though, as this is one of my favorite laptop keyboards out there. It's a rubber dome implementation, so it's quiet and fast, and somehow the feedback is a little firmer and the actuations are quieter than on the 2020 G15s that I tested earlier in the year. For what is worth, this is a slightly different keyboard anyway, as it also offers RGB illumination. 
It's only single zone RGB, but all the keys are uniformly lit and very little light creeps out from under the keycaps. The LEDs are rather dim though. Nonetheless, with all these updates and the improved feedback, I feel that this keyboard is a step up from the already excellent keyboard available on the 2021 Zephyrus G15. The clickpad is identical to the one on the G15 as well and pretty much flawless. A large surface made out of smooth glass, excellent for tracking, swipes and gestures. It also doesn't rattle with taps, unlike other large clickpads, and the physical clicks are quiet and smooth. Finally, for the biometrics, there's a finger sensor included in the power button, but no IR cameras. Ok, so let's talk about the screen now. Earlier in the year, I was awed by the QHD screens that Asus put in the Zephyrus G15 and the ROG SCAR15, and this here is just as nice, but with a larger surface. It's a 16-inch panel in diagonal with WQHD 2560x1600 pixel resolution, 400 plus nits of brightness, 1000 to 1 contrast ratio and roughly 100% DCI-P3 color coverage, plus 165Hz refresh rate and fast response times for gamers. So in just a few words, this is simply a splendid panel for daily use, for video streaming, for gaming and for creative work. The panel comes pre-calibrated out of the box with a Pantone certification and there's very little to improve from the default profiles. We also measured good uniformity levels on our sample and very little light bleeding. With this out of the way, as I mentioned already, we're not getting into any performance numbers here and we're not going to discuss temperatures, noise levels or battery life either. Those will be available once we get to test a retail model with the finalized hardware and software, hopefully in the near future. I can however tell you a couple of things about the specs and the thermal module though. The M16 series is Intel exclusive, built on an 11th gen Intel Tiger Lake H45 hardware platform, so you'll get to choose between a Core i9 11900H processor on the higher end model or a Core i7 11800H processor on the mainstream configurations. Both of them are 8 core and 16 threads uh, in this generation, with just higher clocks and turbo velocity on the i9. For the RAM, the Zephyrus M16 still gets part of it soldered on the motherboard, as well as an upgradable DIMM. Our unit came with 16GB soldered and an extra 16GB DIMM for a total of 32GB in dual channel. I'm not sure whether there will be versions with either 8 or 16GB soldered, but in the past Asus offered only 8GB of RAM soldered on the lower tier models and 16GB soldered on the top configurations, so that might still be the case here. The storage consists of 2x PCIe Gen 4 M.2 storage slots with RAID support. Gen 4 is part of the novelties available with the 11th gen Intel platform and allows for faster transfer speeds. The GPU options are either an RTX 3060 or an RTX 3070, both at 80W and up to 100W with Dynamic Boost 2.0 in supported titles. There's no 3080 configuration, but that's alright since the 3080 offered very little over the 37 at this kind of power anyway, so it was not worth the premium demanded for. That aside, there's still no MUX switch or advanced Optimus on this series, just active sync. That's convenient for daily use, but the laptop takes a performance hit in certain games, especially those high FPS titles at Full HD resolution. I'll get more in depth about this in the written article available on the site. Finally, there's a 90Wh battery inside this laptop, which paired with ActiveSync should return good runtimes. For what is worth though, Asus bundled the M16 model that we have here with their 240W charger and not the 200W charger from the G15, and that suggests that uh, this Intel model is going to require more power than the AMD variant. USB-C charging is also possible at up to 100W, and here's uh, how the 165W Asus USB-C charger compares to the 240W brick in terms of size. Specs aside, the M16 benefits from the same software suit and power profiles that you'll encounter on all the ROG laptops, with options for silent, balanced, turbo and manual power profiles at different CPU and GPU settings between them. Turbo is meant for gaming and demanding loads with a high CPU TDP and overclocked GPU, while silent is ideal for daily use where it oftenly keeps the fans idle. As far as the Thermo module goes, that's also identical to the one on the Zephyrus G15 with two fans and a multitude of heat pipes, as well as liquid metal applied on the CPU and regular paste on the GPU. In fact, the entire internal design is similar between the two models. Finally, I mentioned that Asus didn't mess with the bottom panel design either, which allows unobstructed direct air access into the fans and is helped by the higher rubber foot implemented on this series, which creates more space between the laptop and the surface underneath. All in all, I'm confident this M16 will attract a lot of attention and a fair bit of controversy. G15 buyers are probably going to be pissed when they read about this laptop with its 16x10 screen, camera and improved RGB keyboard, plus Thunderbolt 4 and faster storage. On the other hand, the G15 remains AMD-based, which I'm sure matters a whole lot for some of you. 
I'm also just as curious as you are on how this Zephyrus M16 is going to perform, but for now we'll just have to patiently wait for the review unit. I'll just mention that there is an option to undervolt the processor in the BIOS, which might help tame this Intel hardware in this sort of a chassis. As far as I can tell right now, I'd still expect the AMD models to have an edge in multi-threaded loads and in efficiency, but this ROG Zephyrus M16 will most likely be at least competitive with general loads and gaming, so the performance should not be a concern for most potential buyers. Instead, I'd be more worried about the thermals on the higher power settings and how much of an issue having the hot air blown straight into the screen is going to be here, something I'm looking forward to properly clarify in that review. In the meantime, I'd really like to know what you think about this series, so get in touch down below. And make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for our next updates. Talk to you later.